Hello everyone, it is Cheryl Millette live at 5, Mondays on Facebook. I'm going to talk a little about a few things today, some on the lighter side, some on the creative side, and some uh, very important things on the health side. So live at 5 is really, uh, it really comes together, hi Regina, it really comes together because there's so many topics and so many conversations about so many things these days and one of the things in writing is to well it's probably more about my life in a sense of just the people I meet and who I kind of encounter regularly and the books that kind of drop in my lap the idea is uh, today on the lighter side which I mentioned was is something that I've always wanted to do but never did and this was actually to um, to do my own sourdough culture I didn't do it from scratch this is a guy that I uh, got Daryl I got organics from for many many years but he retired and he was going away and he wanted somebody to look after his culture but at the end of the day he found somebody closer to where he lived but he gave me a little bit about it and so I ended up researching about it it is so simple I had no idea all you had to do was add flour and water and you could do it regularly as in daily or you can do it every few days or you could do it once a week but the idea is it smells it smells so much like sourdough and so easy it just goes in the fridge and uh, so I've been experimenting just with growing the culture as they say or no feeding the culture and what is it's just what a simple thing to do the next thing I want to do is is explore more fermenting from using my raw milk to make uh, raw yogurt have leftover whey and apparently if you add whey to your uh, vegetables let's say in, in the fermenting of your vegetables it uh, the process is probably sped up uh, instead of being weeks it's actually uh, days which is kind of exciting so I have this you know raw milk source and it's gonna be really easy for me because for a few years here I've been making my own yogurt which really is just as simple as taking your raw milk and putting it on the counter and when you put the raw milk on the counter within about three days now I kind of can see from the jar that it's going um, pocky I guess you could say and uh, congealing like like yogurt and then on the top where the cream comes up is sour cream I had no idea but usually before the yogurt's ready, I take the sour cream off and put it up. But it is so sweet. It is so good. But when I take the yogurt and I put it in a uh, cheesecloth, no, 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 it actually has to be finer than cheesecloth. It's actually a tea towel, a cotton organic uh, tea towel. And when the yogurt, uh, when you pour in the yogurt, what comes out of the bottom is this wonderful uh, yellow uh, whey. And that's what people if they're drinking whey protein are consuming so you've got this whey liquid and then it must be dried and then packaged for all this whey protein so if they're making cheese whey is a byproduct of making cheese because even though when I put the yogurt through I get a, a more of a Greek yogurt when the whey comes out but if I leave it longer then it goes into cottage cheese and then from there you'd leave it longer longer and then you'd end up getting cheese uh, but I, I actually like the uh, I just like the cottage cheese better I, I probably in whey surprisingly enough is used for stomach ailments but it's also um, very stable so you can uh, versus the whole milk with the whey or even the sour cream it can actually be stored in the fridge for for weeks which is kind of cool so I'm going to get a lot of whey and then I'm, I'm going to experiment with the vegetables which will be a lot of fun the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, art and somebody called me this morning and uh, hi Tracy hi Annette 
and had mentioned they went to an art program. So they say they're not creative, and I always believe, even though I know I was creative, and people say, oh, well, it's easy for you to say, but I really do believe people are creative. I did this program with children, Calling All Artists, and surprisingly, if you just have a little bit of guidance and you understand how to use uh, pencils, uh, brushes, uh, paint, and you have that, it's amazing uh, what people who don't think they are creative uh, can be. So I'll, I'll never forget the child who did a horse's head because it's just all based on shapes. I did it with pencil and she was totally blown away and she's gone on to continue with art and enjoy it. But my cousin was saying this morning that she went to an art program and uh, and she was giving me something else to do. Uh, but I said, no, I'm going to publish my book first. But the idea is these, these art programs that exist where you show up, it's very simple paint. I think it's probably the primary colors, black and white, five of them, and you can make all the colors from that. And with a bit of guidance, the teacher would show them what to do, and then they would follow, and then they would, you know, they'd make their own colors and do the same thing. But she so enjoyed it. She's one of these people that says she's not good in art. But art is so therapeutic. She said she just loved it. Now, she might not have the masterpiece, but who does when you first start off anyway? It doesn't kind of work that way. So that's what I wanted to talk about creatively. But the other thing I wanted to talk about, which is something that has been coming up, and it's more about the uh, understanding that I'll call it trauma. We could also call it uh, accidents which produce uh, injury. We could uh, call trauma uh, mental trauma, uh, anything that's kind of happened that's crazy, even uh, you know, death of somebody that you're very close to, an animal even. And these, I'm just framing them under trauma uh, versus stress, but you could see where traumas would put a stress on the body, basically. And it kind of changes up our world, whether it's how we move, how we function, what we can do. And so what I wanted to kind of bring in here is that trauma comes from three, three ways you can look at it. One is, yes, mental or physical. But how, it re how the body responds is... Um, in, it's kind of like an inflammation. It changes our body chemistry. It changes uh, potentially the mechanical with the inflammation injury. And um, and then, of course, emotional will change trauma. But a physical, of course, kind of puts in a, a tension into the body because if, if you were to kind of pretend you're falling, what happens to the body is it tenses up. It, it goes very tight. And that would actually hold those uh, tissues in the body very tight. And then they're tight, so then you end up getting pain um, because that tightness is no different than when you're uh, an athlete or when I was doing marathons. With the running, it kind of tightens up the body, and this is the whole lactic acid, which is what they say is behind all fibromyalgia. Well, where I want to go with trauma is there's tension every time within the body, and where it's held, uh, you may have heard kind of like the energy, the meridians, and things like that. And it's very important to understand that trauma, when trauma happens, if, if from the littlest standpoint of a physical, so that's why I just kind of want to keep it light on that standpoint. When you go to fall, whether it's you know it's ice. Or uh, I don't know, you trip up something, you fall down. Um, one of the things I learned, and I'm trying to remember where I actually learned it from, is actually to shake the body. And of course, it's so much. Now, if you break a bone, it's different. I mean, if you are a blackout and stuff, that's different. But the idea is like when you fall off a horse, they've said you know, get back on the horse. When the physical thing happens and you, and you find something happens and you, you feel that you tensed up and there was a jolt of any nature, uh, then what you can do is actually just shake the body. So shake it off, I guess, is a good way to say it. 
and it you know you just you're gonna feel it and work it and just shake it off it really works I've been telling this to my walk club for a few years typically when it was kind of icy and it's soy weather and you know people trip and fall especially here in Canada last this past winter but I you know I've kind of brought it forward into all times of the years to bring it up uh, because that that tension is kind of what brings on um, irritation in the body and then inflammation and also the important thing is that the body won't detoxify you won't have this fluid motion in the body and there's that tension and the flow is interrupted but the best time to catch it is when you just have that fall or that trip or something of that nature and you might even have I want to kind of expand it into let's just say you didn't have a good time and you for whatever reason I mean we can always talk about that in more detail but let's just say you didn't enjoy yourself for whatever reason something happened um, people cut you off you know when you're driving anything like that happens where the mind kind of takes it and you know it's kind of uh, you know sometimes they call it the monkey mind again I would say um, get in the habit of shaking it off using the physical body though in that way but mentally thinking of it as also shaking it off and when you go to bed if that's the time if you've kind of thought about things in your day where something bothered you again you can write it down as they talk to journaling but physically you can actually shake it off and that really helps again to release the tension if you meditate if you have relaxation meditation all those kind of things fine keep doing those but the idea here is that the body can get tense and that's just like an athlete and you know lactic acid tightness interference in flow of all kinds it, uh, detoxification um, you know energy is used up in the tightness and the tension and this is why magnesium is one of those important minerals more and more for people because of this tightness so even though I'm talking about the physical we can bring it right into while well, you've been at work all day you don't want to be at work all day or there's things you don't like about work and you just get tenser and tenser um, I'll give another analogy is I remember when I was a new driver and I would catch myself as a new driver um, yes you get used to holding your hands here but I could I could feel myself getting tense and then I you know I'd always when I thought about it remind myself to loosen and you can bring this kind of shaking or mental use breath to relax and kind of get into that position on a more regular basis in your day and again use breath and just and just kind of relax the various whether it's the shoulders or you can feel it in the arms you can probably feel it anywhere I've been playing with this for the last several months and it's crazy just how at times I'll just stop pause and just kind of feel now one of the things I've been doing and I'm just gonna talk to that and this is kind of like uh, either just before bed waking up or anytime when I've got that pause is actually to feel the tension in my face to feel the tension in my face is interesting whether it's the lips the cheeks the eyes and what I started to do is use breath to just to see how I can relax those areas so when I'm not thinking about relaxing and just going about my day-to-day -day, I'm holding tension in my eyes I can feel it in my cheeks I can feel it in my my jaw and my lips is very interesting so coming out of today is just you know some homework here people would be to um, pay attention and see if you can recognize where tension is what tension is at all where you're holding it and using breath to kind of just relax and you could do that right now which is just you can close your eyes 
and you can just feel what your, you know, what your face feels like, or your shoulders feel like, um, your eyes feel like. And when you take a deep breath in, and I may say deep breath in, but just breathe in, and then pause, hold it, and then just focus on whatever area that was kind of coming in for you, whether it's eyes or lips or shoulders. And when you breathe out, just feel the loosening um, and the tension going away. It's quite interesting, quite interesting where we hold tensions at different levels. But the holding the tension as we have muscles, of course, we need muscles to lift weights. We need muscles to do that. And when you're not lifting and when you're not doing that, you can focus on also, you know, relaxing those muscles when you're sitting, when you're eating. Of course, there's the posture and the spine, and, and that's very important too as well. But that's what I really wanted to bring in because in all the research that I did for my book, a part of it is, is this tension is the key is the key to the root cause of disease. And really, you know, Alive at Five is all things healthy, and part of us is understanding that relaxation is very, very important, but throughout our day, we can kind of bring to our attention where we're holding tension, and to just take that time. So sometimes they say, now, you know, every 20 minutes, look away from your screen because uh, you don't want to have the LED lights and those kind of things and look 20 feet or more. Well, the relaxation can also be something that you can do even when you're listening to somebody. You know, they talk about do more listening than more speaking. And when you're listening, you know, use breath to just relax the body and kind of listen that way. So that's what I really what I wanted to talk about today because I think it's very fundamental that we get in touch with our body, uh, we listen to our body, but also learning about how to relax the body and to learn where the tension is. And I mean all parts of the body, again, including the face and the eyes. And so I've been playing with that more so, more I guess you could say it's kind of like on a subtle level, but it really does, um, there's really tension there. And, uh, and now I'm kind of playing with it more and more in, in the daytime, not just kind of before bed. But it, it uh, you know, tension exercises, um, I'll just leave you with this. A very simple thing, but kind of draws, is where you actually lie down on your back, preferably with no pillow. And uh, unless you want to kind of put a towel underneath your neck for the curve of the neck. But the idea is just to lie there. And uh, the way Tilden had his tension exercises, the first part of it was actually as you're lying flat and you have your hands on, um, on either side and you have your legs down. The first part is actually to point your toes and to feel like uh, you're going tense all the way up and in, into the hips and into the um, glutes and those kind of things. And then you kind of feel like you're toes are curling. They're not really curling over, but you kind of do that. So you just bring in that tightness. Now, if you get cramps, you know, that may speak to minerals and magnesium, but the idea is don't do it till you get cramps, but you tense as much as you can. And then once you get that full tension there, uh, then you kind of relax. And you keep relaxing using breath until you feel like you've reached that relaxed state. And then you repeat it five times. And then the other part is your arms. And so what you do is your point is like you, you spread your fingers out and tensing, tensing up, you know, up through the arm, the elbow, shoulder. And, and then you curl up and then getting that full tension all the way up to your shoulders. And, and then you release and relax. Same thing, you wait till you feel that. So if you want an exercise that you can do, uh, it's a part of, part of a whole series of exercises that uh, I started teaching in the Move Well program. But the very first part of it is just that. So legs, arms, and then you do five each, and then you repeat it again. And you absolutely need to wait till you feel that full relaxed state with the whole body and that part of the body. And surprisingly, you're gonna. It's kind of like contrast. You're gonna get a feel more of what that relaxed state feels like because you've tensed up so much 
and then you get that relaxed state. And this will help, it helps us understand where that relaxed state feels like. It's really simple that way. So that's what I kind of wanted to bring forward today is those three things. Yes, sourdough culture, very, very simple. Uh, and I'm going to start making bread when I get back from Ireland and Scotland. And then artistic um, and drawing. I would even suggest you have just pencil and pad and, and sketch is one of my favorite things to do. But that, um, and you could easily do that even if you're used to watching TV and you want to kind of pull up and sketch it. But artist, I believe everybody's uh, an artist. And I'm, I'm inspired and motivated to tell people that everybody's an artist. And then, yeah, the third thing today was, was the absolutely talking about how trauma but tension is uh, the important piece there. And then, of course, the relaxation. And I think meditation and quieting the mind is kind of like relaxation for the mind. But I continue to ask people how they do with meditation. And they're not so, how can I say it, uh, keen on it because they just have such a hard time doing it. And I think these relaxation exercises or just focusing on relaxing the body is uh, maybe a precursor to getting into meditation state, but there's absolutely more tools around that, which I'll probably bring in over time. But the idea here is, yes, be less tense, everyone, because less tense is going to be better uh, for your health. And it's simple as that. So I just wanted to thank everybody for, for coming on today. And if you're uh, just catching it now, then I encourage you to kind of go back and, and watch it, especially around this tension. This is very, very key. Uh, tension because when we have all the stress in our life that's what the body's doing it's tensing and it may come in different areas it may be stronger for some than others but I'll just leave you what my massage therapist friend said and uh, what does she say she says to people um, you can stop wearing your shoulders as earrings and in the winter time or spring coming out of winter time she'll tell people uh, to learn how to take the earmuffs off uh, the shoulders, the earmuffs off the ears. So basically, I mean, if, if, if shoulders kind of relax, what people do, and as I've kind of been watching them, is they go like this. You know, they have their shoulders up. So that that's kind of the idea that way. So you can kind of feel the difference here, but that's what she was meaning. Anyway, I want to wish everybody a good day. I want to hear if there's anything that you learned that was uh, new, perhaps, or a reminder. And you can post it so that everybody can uh, kind of go, well, yeah, that's great. And also questions. So any questions uh, regarding today? Does anybody have any questions? And we can easily rock and roll here with uh, with any questions that you may have. It may, it may not be even what's on the topic today. That's fine. But if you have any questions, I'm, I'm open to trying to answer. I don't always want to think I have the answers, but usually somewhere there's some sort of a thing that pops in and thoughts and ideas and stuff that can help. But um, yeah, well, it's good to see everyone. I think, Regina, you're uh, back in Australia. I think so. And and Howard. Howard's an, um, Howard's brother, Morgan, is actually an artist. And he does really, really great uh, great work. I, I'm, I'm hoping he's still an artist, Howard, that he's still doing that. And if he does have a website, send it to me. Love to, uh, love to see it and hope to see you at the Schaumburg Fair next week. Uh, next spring uh, there's uh, sounds like a good group of people are going to come together so it'll be kind of like a, a reunion from where I grew up they have a, a Schomburg fair a big spring fair agricultural fair but it also has a demolition derby and tractor pulls and and uh, a lot of fun and not just for the people that live around there but I encourage other people to make the trip to Schomburg it's worth the Where's the drive to Schaumburg to see the Schaumburg Fair? It's, it's usually like the last weekend in May. It's like a spring fair. Uh, a beautiful town. Beautiful town. They've done a great job. So no questions. 
I am going to wish everybody a healthy week, and I look forward to next Monday. Now, I, I do want to briefly mention here I'm going to be traveling to Ireland next Monday, or next Sunday night, but I'll be there Monday. So I'm hoping I'm all settled in. Fortunately, it's going to be later there by five hours, so it'll be 10 o'clock. So I should be settled into wherever I am, and I think almost all places have Wi-Fi. So I hope to come on and uh, share whatever kind of comes uh, comes on, uh, you know, through the trip, through the travels, and that way. Otherwise, I'll just wing it what comes to mind. So again, everyone, have a great week. Any questions, uh, feel free to post them at any time. I'm trying to think if there's any links links from what I posted. I'll post them below if there's anything that can be helpful. Otherwise, focus on being less tense, which is the opposite, uh, relaxation. Take care, everyone. Best of health. Until next week. Bye for now.